Hello class, welcome again to one of my videos. A promise is a promise. And because I said that I was going to give you something for you to once again go over the approach from photograph to essay, here we are again. And here in this video you will see how to expand a photograph into an essay. So in this short video you're going to follow now, you will probably see that we have used a photograph as the basis to expand our ideas to become bigger, more expanded, clearer, and more detailed into what we call an essay. How do we do that? Well, in the second unit we are studying, we are seeing photograph writing. And in order to have a good essay, we need to have photographs. You already know how to write photographs and how to write pieces. I mean, topic sentences. And as you see here, since you have learned that a paragraph consists of three parts, a topic sentence, supporting sentences that make up the body, and a concluding sentence, notice the parts in the paragraph seen below. I will read the paragraph, and as I read it, I want you to pay attention to the topic. Remember, paragraphs do not require a title, because the title might be in verse, immersed in the in the topic sentence so as you see here the topic sentence for this paragraph is dogs are connected to humans in three main ways or manners this is what we are going to talk about so this is the topic sentence and you will see in blue and bolded the topic and the concluding sentence and you will see the three major supporting points highlighted in pink so i will read all the paragraph and then I will go over the explanation you find below. As we read the paragraph, let's try to picture the same information in a more extensive way and then we're going to come up with ideas to create an essay. So, dogs are connected to humans in three main manners. First, we have working dogs. These dogs, such as Siberian Huskies and Collies, serve people almost like employees. To the sheep farmers, for example, a good sheep dog is his most valuable partner. Second, other dogs are known primarily for their excellence in sports. The sleek and supremely fast greyhound is used in dog races, and many hunting dogs, such as setters, retrievers, and pointers, often compete in hunting trails. Third, many people enjoy dogs as companions. All kinds of dogs can be excellent companions, but a few breeds are kept only for this purpose. Some examples are the toy dogs, such as Chihuahua or Lhasa apples. Because of the relationships they have with people, dogs are often called man's best friend. When you write, when you want to write a paragraph about a topic in more detail, you will not limit yourself to write just one single idea into one paragraph. So you can turn your paragraph into an essay. Paragraphs can be easily expanded to essay length. And as we do in the paragraph, an essay will also have three sections. These sections are the introductory paragraph called the introduction, the supporting paragraphs called the body of the essay, and a final thought collected in the conclusion or concluding paragraph. Before you see the changes made to the paragraph to extend the explanation under the topic man's best friend, think of the importance of having all the elements mentioned before and having an effective topic and a concluding sentence that will first introduce the topic and finally wrap it up. Below you will find an essay on the same topic. Notice how the paragraph was expanded into a more elaborated presentation. And the arguments that you find in the paragraph are later seen in the essay. Once again, I will give you five seconds to quickly take a look at the words that are highlighted and the sentences that are different in the paragraph. Did you take a picture? Now, let's go over the essay. As I told you, same elements that you will find in the paragraph, same elements will be found in the essay. 
Here you have an essay that requires a title, and the title of this essay is Man's Best Friend. The idea that was previously presented in the paragraph is now portrayed in a more elaborated way. We start with an introduction, and the introduction says, The dog is generally considered the first domesticated animal. The domesticated dog has lived with human beings as a working partner and household pet in all areas and culture since the time people lived in caves. It is generally believed that the direct ancestor of the domestic dog is the wolf, originally found throughout Europe, Asia, and North America. Archaeologists have found remains of dogs that are 10,000 years old. In these Asian societies, as well as in our modern one, dogs are connected to humans in three main manners. Take a look at this, and I will go back to the topic sentence and see. Dogs are connected to humans in three main manners. And I'll take a look at the thesis statement. In these Asian societies, as well as in our modern one, dogs are connected to humans in three main manners. What are we going to see here in the essay? We will see a discussion of how dogs are connected to humans and there are three relationships between man best friend man's best friend and dogs i mean dogs and men so now you're talking about the introduction of the photograph and the introduction of the photograph is a general idea it presents general information about the topic being discussed but after this main idea we find a very specific thought that will control the whole discussion in paragraph A, B, and C, which is the body of the essay. So, as you see here, we're going to now go over the development of these three main manners. Let's read paragraph A. Paragraph A in your outline, remember? First, we have working dogs. Does it ring your bell? Yes. It was the first detail found in the body of our paragraph. So, First, we have working dogs. These dogs, such as Siberian Huskies and Collies, serve people almost as employees. These dogs help pull heavy loads, run up, run up cattle, and keep a sharp eye out of strangers. To a sheep farmer, for example, a good sheep dog is his most valuable partner. Sheep dogs, such as Border Collies, Standard Collies, and Shet and Shetland sheep dogs are very intelligent and can learn to respond to hand signals as well as spoken words. Sheep dogs in Scotland, for example, move sheep along with barely a glance from the shepherd. As a result, working dogs are worth to their master and they are proud of them. Then we have the other idea. If you remember, we have the second major supporting point presented in the paragraph, and we say, other dogs are known primarily for their excellence in sports. And then I go over the explanation of it. The sleek and supremely fast greyhound is used in dog races. These races take place in specially prepared tracks where the competitors choose a mechanical rabbit. People gamble on, the, on this athletic's performance. Bird dogs are a type of hunting dog. Setters and pointers, for example, recognize the bird's scent long before it takes a sound and show their owner where the bird is by standing rock still. Retrievers, such as golden retrievers or lavender retrievers, will throw themselves into an icy cold lake to pick up the bird their owner has shot. There's, these special hunting dogs often compete in hunting trails. Clearly, sporting dogs are the athletes of the, of the world of dog world. As you saw, here in paragraph B, we're discussing the second idea presented in the paragraph. Now let's go over C. Third, many people enjoy a dog as a companion. All kinds of dogs can be excellent companions. Both working dogs and hunting dogs have great patience and are very good with little children. Most of these dogs will allow children to climb all over them and are great babysitters because of their loyalty to their owner and their family. A few breeds are kept only for the purpose of being a companion. Some of these, some of these are the toy dogs, such as Chihuahua or Lhasa. So, 
Since these dogs are so tiny, they are great to have if your masters live in a small apartment. In short, all dogs, including toy dogs, are wonderful companions. As you probably have seen, and I'm going to go back to the photograph for you to see, and take a look at the words and the sentences that begin each of these photographs and see how these, thir these three ideas, one, two, and three, this one, this one, and this one, are the ones that we have in the body, first, second, and third, of our photograph. So it means that the major supporting points found in the paragraph will later become the topic sentences of paragraph A, paragraph B, and paragraph C in our outline, and the ones that we're going to find in the body of our essay. Since we have already seen the three presentation of ideas for details one, two, and three, you have probably noticed that we have started with a topic sentence we have a concluding sentence and we have three ideas that are supporting or developing the topic sentence of each paragraph. So what you have seen or done in one paragraph in the five paragraph essay is done five times in the five paragraphs that you see. Once again, I repeat, the topic sentence is now the thesis statement that controls the whole essay. And the introductory paragraph is a journal idea about the topic having a more specific or concrete idea that introduces the discussion of A, B, and C, which are the three major supporting points in the body. And if the topic sentence now becomes a thesis statement, what happens to the concluding sentence here? Well, remember that we will also have a concluding paragraph. So the conclusion in an essay comes to be a summary of what we discussed in the body of the essay. So let's read the explanation or the discussion that we have had in the conclusion of this paragraph. And you will see that the last idea here is baldy because this one is the concluding sentence of our paragraph that will now become the concluding sentence of our essay. Let's take a look. Although there are a great number of dog breeds, they can, be identified, they can be classified into these three main types by their relationship to their owners. If their masters have small businesses in the city or run a farm, dogs can be great helpers. Even if their owners are not athletes or big sports fans, their performance in sports prove they are built for physical activity. However, the most common relationship between humans and dogs are come as bound where these give their owners a sense of loyalty and company. Because of the relationships they have with people, dogs are often called man's best friend. Wow! It means that what was before a paragraph now has become an essay. And if you paid attention to the last paragraph, you see here that ideas in A, B, and C are summarized again. Although there are a great number of dog breeds, they can be classified into three main types by the relationships to their owners. Does it ring your bell again? Well, this one is a, con a classification essay. The previous was a classification paragraph, so now we have expanded. If the masters have small businesses in the city or run a big farm, dogs can be great helpers. So we said we have working dogs. Helpers, workers, in other words. Even if their owners are not athletes or big sports fans, their performance in sports prove they are built for physical activity. And remember the second idea in the essay? All their dogs are primarily known for their excellence in sports. We're talking about the same, so we're summarizing what we saw in that in paragraph. And finally, the most common relationship between humans and dogs is the bond that they have with their owners and the sense of loyalty and company. So we maybe remember that the last discussion was many people enjoy a dog as a companion, so they are good company. And finally, as you see, here you will see the last sentence is the conclusion of our paragraph. Thank you very much for watching. Wait for the next video. Bye-bye.